Good morning. Welcome back. This is Daybreak on Citizen Television. Thank you for staying with us. In studio is the Navaholo Member of Parliament <coughs> and his counterpart from Gatanga constituency to take a look at some of the concessions made in regards to the proposals contained in the Finance Bill 2023 and chaired by Molo MP, who today, whose report today will be discussed by the National Assembly. Over 500-page report supported by more than 3,500 supporting documentations as presented to the committee by stakeholders who appeared before the Finance and National Planning Committee of the National Assembly, Honorable Emmanuel Wangwe and Wakili. Edward Murillo, thank you for your time and staying with us here on the broadcast. Coming to you, Wakili. There, there seems to be a problem which is underlying, and uh, I'm looking at the projections as pointed out by the committee, which seeks to raise about 130 billion Kenya shillings in additional revenue to finance the budget, the first for the Kenya Kwanzaa administration. Mm. But isn't it also important that uh, you, policymakers, turn your attention on financial leakages and the misuse of public funds mm. amounting to more than 700? and 20 billion Kenya shillings, going by the numbers given by the former head of state, mm. that we lose 2 billion Kenya shillings daily, mathematically. That's about 60 billion a month and mm. 720 billion Kenya mm. shillings mm. every year. Mm. I mean, how can we tap on that and mm. seal the loopholes mm. in order to address the problem of finances in this country? Yeah, thank you, Ayub. Let me first of all address the issue about revenue, rather expenditure. Um, and say that um, in 2010, we came up with that brand new constitution. And this constitution created a number of governance structures mm -hmm. which were not there before. Um, you find that from the judiciary, we didn't have a Supreme Court, we got a Supreme Court. Uh, at the legislature level, we, we didn't have a, a Senate. Uh, we, have, we got a Senate and an expanded uh, uh, parliament. Um, uh, is, is executive the same, and also created very many constitutional offices which go a lot of money. Um, and, and therefore, we were putting the, 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 the new wine in old, uh, old skin, mm. and therefore, there, there is a problem. And, and we, 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 in, the, in the old constitution, we never envisaged that since now the expenditure have bloated, how do we then come in? And, and create uh, and, and create more revenue to be able to plug in that 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 that, that, that whatever because that, that that deficit because we have the the, 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 the new constitution has come up with so many structures it it, it requires funding mm -hmm. but they, they we didn't address on how then do we generate more more, more revenue double the revenue to ensure that we are able uh, to cover that debt and that's why the new constitution and the national deficit mm. and the borrowing are intertwined. Because here you have a revenue which has not moved or changed. The structures have changed and, and it require more money. So you must cover that money. Where does that money come from? That money come from the borrowing now. And that's, that's the issue now. And the question uh, which uh, the country is asking is that we, with all these things in place, mm -hmm. there, is, there, there are few, there's some few things will not change. We cannot change the constitution, but we can address the issue of revenue. So do we continue borrowing, or do we generate revenue within, uh, within, 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 within the country? And th th therefore, I say taxation is always a controversial issue um, they, they, because again, you want, the, you want the, the country to develop, but there are challenges. Every, as a member of parliament, the, the, the needs at the constitution level, that the constituency level are the same. People want good roads. Okay. Uh, people want people want people want uh, the, the bursary for their for their for their for their students. Uh, people want water. People want power. But again, if that's the case, then how do we how where do we get that money? Is either we borrow, or we we increase the taxation. Which is the come priority? To, come to the issue of okay, between the two now, the taxation and the borrowing. Uh, which is the priority for you, the government? You, as a member of parliament, and, and the Kenya Kwanzaa administration, the budget proposal to borrow, not to borrow or to tax. The, 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 as a Kenya Kwanzaa uh, yes. manifesto, yeah. and I think the president have echoed that a number of times. Mm -hmm. uh, he has said clearly that when you know you're in a hole, stop digging. 
Uh, and we have seen countries which not heed that advice. We have Zambia here, we have Ghana, we have seen in Greece, uh, countries whereby they have overborrowed beyond their, their GDP. Uh, and therefore, uh, as a Kenya Kwanza government, mm -hmm. A, a police which we, want, we, which we run the campaign, our campaigns with, we don't want to keep on digging. We want, we want to generate our own revenue. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it might be painful, but at the, at, at, on, on the long term, uh, our people will see the benefit because the easier way is to borrow and, uh, make, and, and make merry, uh, but without foreseeing how that money will be paid. Okay. Let me and as you say that now, before we move to the taxation, that is now a contrasting position because data from the National Treasury shows that President Ruta's administration has borrowed 17.4 billion more than his predecessor, Uhuru Kenyatta, in his first six months in office, appending the plan to go slow on debt. Treasury debt data further shows that the new administration tapped loans worth 452 billion in the first six months since March, which is more than 434.6 billion than his predecessor the same period a year earlier, which means you have borrowed 17 billion more than Uhuru Kenyatta's government. And you said you are going slow on debt and uh, ending the begging bowel culture, yet you seem to be not doing what you promised to do. Are you, we, here we have the Kenya Kwanza first budget mm. is on the table. But you borrowed more than what your predecessor did at the same period. Remember, any borrowing must be supported mm. by a budget. And it must be supported by a legislative uh, a provision in the, in, the, in the finance bill. So the, the, if there are any borrowing, the borrowings were purely based on the previous budget which was passed by the previous parliament. This is a time whereby we are putting in our budget. And maybe just, just to give you a hint, mm -hmm. uh, we have a national deficit. We have a deficit of one, we had a budget deficit of 1.1 trillion. The natural way or the easier way was to go and borrow that money. But the, the, the Kenya Kwanza government has said no. We must go decreasing our, our, our debts in terms of borrowing. Today, out, out of, out of 1.11 trillion, the government is only borrowing 600. And the trend is to ensure that deficit is increased to the bare minimum which the GDP can be able to support. So if you look at the budget, that's, that's the proposal. So we are, we are on, a, on a trajectory to reduce borrowing, but spur growth internally to increase revenue and, and make sure that everybody because again, that's one of the biggest challenges. Uh, you is that is a, is a very few. Um, the very they are, the, the people who pay taxes are few. So the, the Kenya Kwanza government uh, position is to ensure that we bring as many people in the in the taxation uh, in, the, in the in the tax bracket. So at least the load of tax is eased among Kenyans in in the in the short term, in the short to, mid, mid, to, mid, to, mid, to medium term. Um, let, let me let me let me point a key issue here because okay. again, it's about accountability. As Kenya Kwanza government, one of the things we have put a very keen eye on is on issues pertaining to corruption. Because it is, we, we, we do not want to lose what you call the moral ground mm -hmm. to tell people, look, we want you to contribute on this and that then that money it dissipates. And remember, what people have, they, are, they have, they have, they have a, a, a corruption phobia. They have, they have, they have, they have come, they have, they have, they have been hurt before. Okay. Um, and that is what we want to bring to an end. Okay. And, and how are we doing it? The, the, the auditor report, the audit general's report, won't remember they've been read and read many times. Uh, Wango is in one of those committees uh, which come with, 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 uh, with, with, with those reports. Okay. But the question is, we you've talked about a loss of 720 billion every yes. year what has the previous government did to stem to avoid wastage we want to do two things number one we want to bring in a legislation whereby if there is one has been mentioned in the auditor's report All right. immediately yeah. one steps up, step aside number two we want to bring in a, 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 a legislation in parliament in such a way that corruption cases and do no longer take 
10, 5, 5, 10 okay. 15 years. Mm -hmm. Just the way we have electoral ele 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 election timelines, yeah. timelines. Mm -hmm. we also have the same kind of timelines okay. in such a way that justice, because justice denied is always uh, delayed, is always justice denied. We want to ensure that the, the, the execution of corruption cases are swift. So at least on one hand, we are able to encourage our people to say, look, we are doing everything possible to kill this animal called corruption. But on the other hand, uh, we are saying, look, this is your country, Thank be you. patriotic, support it, and we move on. Thank you. And, and Kenyans have been patriotic enough to pay their part of uh, uh, the pie. It's only that their uh, money is misused by uh, officials in government. And, and largely this, Honda Bawonga coming to you. When uh, the former president said that we lose 2 billion Kenya shillings a day, that mathematically comes to about 720 billion a year. And that was corroborated by the statement made by Chief Justice Emeritus David Kenani Maraga, who said we lose a third of our budget to corruption and financial wastage. On the policy part, what responsibility will you play then to curb the siphoning of hard-earned money by the Kenyan people who pay to fund government in order to get services, but not to pay in order to be stolen from? Thank you very much. I feel we already have various uh, laws in place. Uh, to, to help CAB and various institutions, the way my colleague has said. The issue, we have the DCI to investigate, we have the DPP or DPP to prosecute, we have the systems in, in judicial systems. What is missing is the, um, uh, the, 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 the truthfulness of our officers mm. to perform their work. If they come out strongly and do their work honestly, then we don't have we don't have shortage in law of laws. The laws are there. I feel we are in a position where we can enforce the laws that we have, of course, with the little things here and there, to cap where, like what he's saying, if they, 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 when they come, they effectively are able to investigate, we can push for that. But the primary laws to, 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 to control these issues are in place. I don't, I don't see any, 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 any reason to run away from uh, helping us to prosecute. But the only thing I would ask is let the arms of government mm -hmm. be independent. When the executive is executing their role, yeah. let the legislature not now interfere with the executive so that we hold one arm of government unto account. When the legislature is now doing its, its role, let's not have the eye of the, 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 the executive coming in to forewarn and say, if you don't do this, mm -hmm. we will not do one, two, three. Let us be independent, and then we converge on the table where we know the converging point of it is the implementation by the executive. So I feel once the executive is, uh, once the three arms of government are independent, yeah. definitely we will have to achieve the, 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 the primary call. I just want to respond to one, to one issue that you raised earlier on. Mm. You read a very good statement that finance, uh, that uh, the, the current com borrowing yes. by the current government mm. is over and above by 17 billion. I respect a principle that numbers don't lie. And where there is an issue that numbers don't lie, it is evident that that has happened. However much we'd want to run away from it and say we, the, the Kenya Kwanzaa government is not, is not going into borrowing, but we have evidence already that they have been borrowing. The only thing they want to, to put to us is the overtaxation, mm. which they want to push onto the Kenyan people. And our role as opposition is to resist that so that we advise them that do not overtax us. We have now come down to a level whereby in the initial stage, our, the current administration did not accept the truth that my brother talked of the macroeconomic issues around the Kenyan economy. Kenya cannot stand alone. They told us that Ukraine-Russian uh, war does not affect the Kenyan. Mm -hmm. But after that, they've now realized Ukraine-Russia issues can affect our country mm. because we import a lot of wheat from Ukraine and once it's at war, definitely there is an effect. So that being the position, we need to consider that borrowing, we cannot run away from borrowing as a stopgap measure. Mm. And we cannot now say we overtax our persons just because we want to stop the issue of borrowing. We cannot run away from that. But what we need to do, why are we borrowing? Are we borrowing the resources and spending it to the right destination? Mm. Are we having those people who are entrusted with the resources, if they, they happen to misappropriate, can we see them before the court of law? 
Can we see them behind the bus? That is the only thing that maybe they should now be telling us on how they intend to make sure mm. even the taxes that they've collected, are they, is, is our money safe? Let them now tell us that if you collect tax, you give us these resources, we are going to keep safe your resources. Okay. P pointing that out, when you say that uh, there is an evident shifting of the goalposts in regards to the effect and the consequences of the war in Russia, war in Europe largely, by Russia on Ukraine, in regards to the high cost of living in the country, and uh, pointing out the double standards of the Kenya Kwanzaa government, as you say, you also, on the 28th of June, as the Mio coalition in 2022, denied the high cost of living and its impact in the country. In fact, Odinga and Karua said, the campaign leaders, that stopped backing about the high cost of living in the country. Certainly, when the Kenya Kwanzaa administration ascended to authority, the high cost of living is amongst the topmost agenda of some of the issues you want the government addressed. Why was it not a priority then? It's a priority now for you as a coalition political party. Isn't that not double standards as well on your end? It's not double standard. When, when Ray Lodinga said of uh, a high cost of living, the issue that was coming from the other side was the issue of the handshake. They were looking at it like, um, do not be together. When you are together, you are building, uh, raising the high cost of living unto us. In terms of the issues of numbers and the, in the house and the issues to do with, with um, how the policies of, of the then government was running. But Ray Lodinga was saying, I'm not in government. I'm only a friend of the president in government. Address the government of the day. That was the only thing that- But he dismissed uh, it. Yes, the, he was saying he's not in government. Mm. And indeed, I want to stand here and say, Ray Lodinga was not in government. He was simply a friend to, or, to Uru Kenyatta. So they were addressing a wrong person. They were addressing the issues of the handshake, not the issue of the presidency of the day. The, the, the point is that he dismissed the, I mean, not, not the, the communicator or the messenger, but the message, which was on the cost of living in the country, and he dismissed it all, all together, wholesale. And that's why I'm saying, uh, Ayub, the issue was uh, on the handshake. That them, Rai Rodinga, being a friend to the then president, was making it difficult for the policies on how they wanted to run the government of the day. Mm. And Raila came out very clearly and said, I'm not in government. If you have issues to do with the uh, cost of living of the of, uh, cost of living of now, please ask the president of the day. Okay. Yes. Wakili Murillo, talking about the VAT increment, uh, that is uh, to 16% uh, from 8%, and uh, ha have you factored in the consequence this will bear on uh, increasing VAT on fuel to 31% and the impact on the cost of electricity production in the country? by Kenya Shilling 7, that is uh, the FCC. I'm talking about the fuel cost charge per unit because of diesel, which is used to generate electricity. Mm -hmm. Did you conceal it in a way that Kenyans will not understand the impact this will have on the cost of electricity production in the country by virtue of increasing that VAT to 16%? Uh, I think you need to put things, give things in the right words. There is no increase. What happened is that the budget proposal is to remove the subsidy on the 8%. The previously, there was a subsidy of 8%, and now that subsidy has been removed. And why? So what do you mean there is let no me, increment? Let, 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 okay, you'll make your point, let, but what do you let, mean let, by let me, let me, I'm coming no there. increment? I'm okay. coming there. Because again, again uh, some of these things, when you tell people that we have increased by 8%, that 8% previously, that, pre, that, that, that 8% previously, it, uh, it has been covered by what you call the, the um, there is a need to standardize the VAT in such a way that today this item is being charged 8%, 9%, the other one is 10%, we they want to standardize. And but number three, you have said clearly uh, that with that 8%, mm -hmm. the government will be able to generate 130 billion. And as I said earlier, we have a budget deficit, we had a budget deficit of 1.1 trillion. And you said no. We, we need to slash it by half. 
Now, for that, for, so it's about do we continue borrowing or do we increase taxation? As, as I say, it's a situation of what you call an egg and chicken and chicken and egg situation. Which one do you discard? Which one do you take? And, and therefore, the, 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 the issue about the 8% is not an 8% in isolation. It's 8% because in the in absence of 8%, no. we'll be called upon to go and borrow. Dig the same, same hole which you'll be talking about. And that's why, that's why I, I said we, 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 I need, we need to educate Kenya that there is whatever action you do in, in, a, in any budget, there's a, there's a consequence. Because again, at the ground level, mm -hmm. at the ground level, everybody wants to ensure they are driving on good roads. At the ground level, people want water in their homesteads. At the ground level, everybody wants power in their own homes. But how? There's no miracle in that. There must be an element of, 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 of taxation. And, 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 and therefore, um, what, what, what the conversion which, which we need to uh, balance here is, is, is that, is, is, is that um, are Kenyans overtaxed? And, and the statistics have shown clearly from the GDP, uh, we, we, we tax about 14% of our GDP, mm -hmm. whereas other countries are taxing about 25, others going to 35. Nordic countries tax all the way to 45%. But, of, but you of, can't of, compare of, Nordic countries of, to Kenya. Of their GDP, but bottom line, okay. and I think okay. that's what we are not telling Kenyans. Okay. Uh, because when you talk about overtaxation, compared to where, we, that conversion needs to come out. And Kenya, it's stuck at, at, at the age of 14%. Mm -hmm. Whereas other countries, uh, developed countries, uh, they, they, they do even 5, 45%. But again, I'm not saying that we increase. But I think the bottom line is that, and as I said, this conversation is very important. Bottom line is that if we, if we need to run the country, country is run through resources. Those resources can either be borrowed okay. or must come through taxation. Uh, and, 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 and point regard, uh, factually, uh, because uh, it's incorrect to compare the Nordic countries and Kenya, because mm. Sweden, Finland, and Norway have uh, more at times economic muscle than even some members of the European Union, including major powers like Germany and the United Kingdom, because of proper management of their resources, being a social welfare state where education is free, healthcare is free, and transport is free. I mean, how then do you compare uh, you, to a country where we virtually we pay have, for everything? We yeah. pay for electricity, we pay for water, yet these services are not forthcoming or are not commensurate in we terms of utilization. When, when I read uh, books like um, the, 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 books, the, the motivation books, they tell me, don't compare yourself with the worst. Compare yourself with the best because that's how you inspire and go yourself. I have, I have no business. Uh, I come here and trying to compare ourselves with the failed states. Mm -hmm. I need to compare Kenya with the developed states because that's where Kenyans are aspiring to be. Okay, and what's important is that Kenyans want to see value for the shilling that they pay, uh, despite the comparisons that uh, you keep making. And, and, and this is largely applies to many other countries because uh, management of uh, the country is equally very important because every, when the Kenyan people are caught the mandate to whoever they so wish, because we are democracy, then they expect service delivery despite whoever is in power or runs the country. Honorable Emmanuel Wangwe, one final question here. And going forward, there has been a challenge in terms of, as, have, as uh, put by Wakil Edward Morio, the Honorable Member of Parliament, Katanga Constituency, in regards to the management and the taxation policy and what needs to be done in terms of investment, making the country export-oriented economy. But Labor Day 2023 was the only one where there was no increase in the minimum wage for employers in the country. That clearly speaks about the dire situation of the economy in the country and therefore needs proper management. What will Parliament do the next five years to keep track of the administration and ensure that the Kenyan people get value for the shilling that they pay. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Ayub, Ayub, um, it would not be very also good that I live without commenting on the 8% in as much as I'll come to, to comment okay, on what please. you have said. Allow me just to say that uh, my brother has said that there is no increment. My position is there is a, an upward shift from 8% to 16%. To 16%. And um, the way I look at it, on, uh, I look at it is that um, is, is something you can compare and say. Want to increase 8 percent to sixteen percent, the ripple effect is ten to eleven shillings more on each petroleum product. Uh, petrol is likely to hit 192, 190, 193. Today, actually, we'll be having it today fourteenth, and we'll see 
how it will re react maybe in the next final, in the next uh, uh, reading. And uh, the effect it has uh, on the economy is very enormous. It's actually cutting across everyone. Once you increase it from eight to 16, definitely transport in schools. All school buses use diesel. What is going to happen is we are going to have it as an effect. Matatus are going to react. The response is going to be across the whole country eco economy. Therefore, that shift, in as much as uh, our brothers feel it's not a shift, there has mm -hmm. been some uh, kind of subsidy, which I honestly feel it is not there. There has not been a subsidy on fuel. Mm -hmm. The fuel has been uh, direct, and that, uh, when they came into leadership, they did away with subsidy. So it's a dry position which we are beginning on, and it's like it's going to affect, uh, to cause a shift in the, in the, in the economy. Coming back to what you've uh, requested me to answer, the issue of what are we going to do in terms of um, helping the, the, the take caution on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the resources of Kenyan people, we look at it from two angles. There will be some bills from the government side which they will want to, to pursue their, their position. Mm. We will also be putting in our own bills as Kenyans, representatives in the House, so that where we find <clears throat> a challenge, we will be coming out with legislations to really uh, hold the government of the day to account. We will not sit down and wait. Remember, I, in, the, in the same house, okay. we have leaders who are wakili like him, who will not just oppose a bill because it has come from the opposition. No. When we get to the floor, we look at bills uh, holistically. If it has a political connotation, yeah. then it takes a political angle. Okay. But if it's a bill that is honest, a bill that's going to help Kenyan people across the divide, we don't look at it from where it has originated. So from my side, I look at it like our team. Mm -hmm. We have a full economic forum by the ASMIO, which will be consulting on various issues that affect the economy. And we will be pushing economic bills into the floor of the house. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, final comments on Wakili mm -hmm. Murillo. And then we have it. The report will be debated from 9 a.m. this morning. I'm sure you'll be heading there immediately. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, then what do we look forward to? I mean, the deputy president is on record, so is his boss, the president, as to how they want the voting pattern to look like. Uh, is it uh, their way or uh, the people of Gatanga's way? <laughs> uh, that's a, a very interesting question. Um, number one, uh, I'm a realist and very practical. And my conversation with the people of Katanga, as I said, my first duty responsibility is to listen to the people who have given me this forum in the people of Katanga constituency. Um, and my conversation with them, and I think it's good to report and say this, they have said clearly, they want roads. Mm -hmm. They want water in their homes. They want me to continue making sure that I support education through bursary. Okay. They also make, want to make sure that they remove darkness in Gatanga by bringing power. Okay. But they also are aware that, they also said that they do not want debt. All right? They have said that they don't want debt. And therefore, if they don't want debt, it means they are ready to support the, 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 the finance bill, whereby there is therefore without, uh, without much ado. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we shall debate. Because remember, the, 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 the bill will come before the House. We, uh, as, as myself uh, and members of the Kenya Kwanzaa, we are not rubber stamps. Mm. We interrogate. We, we seek for accountability because that is the role which has been given. Uh, and therefore, we, 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 we expect that um, the, the, the bill which has become before the House okay. is suiting the needs of our people, the people who give us a mandate. Thank you. And therefore, we shall vote as they want. Thank you. Honorable Wakili Edward Moreo, Gatanga Constituency Member of Parliament. Your time is all appreciated. We have a second segment coming up. And Honorable Emmanuel Wange, the, Wangwe, the lawmaker representing Navaholo Constituency. Parliament today will be the attention center of the Kenyan people as the report that uh, the Committee on Finance and National Planning, chaired by Molo Constituency lawmaker Kuria Kimani, will be making the report available for lawmakers uh, to read through and make a decision on it ahead of the second reading. Up next is Safina Cheng Oma with a different discussion and thereafter.
I'll see you on the health and lifestyle segment with a focus on autism and what needs to be done from the medication perspective. The hashtag on Twitter is Daybreak. The SMS code is 22422 at Citizen TV Kenya, at Ayub Abdikadir, and at Safin underscore Achieng. Stay tuned.